Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Stock Market Brief Show, where we navigate the financial markets through the lens of technical and intermarket analysis. I'm Michael Silva, and today we have a crucial topic on the agenda. It's the housing market and its looming warning signs for the S and P 500. In recent weeks, we've observed some concerning data that suggests trouble ahead. But what's more alarming is the shift in the once positive correlation between the housing market and the S&P 500, which is now dipping into negative territory. This change could have significant implications on the broader market, and it's essential to understand these dynamics. So join me today as we dive into the latest charts and data and unraveling this story behind these recent developments. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So just this last week, we did have some housing data that came out that pointed to a slowing economy. You can see over here some of the residential construction, such as starts, started dipping to a four-year low. The high interest rate environment is causing many potential buyers to remain on the sidelines, was one of the notes. Even the chief economist Robert Dietz from the National Association of Home Builders had this to say. It's not just single family market that is experiencing challenges. The three month moving average for multifamily starts is as low as since the fall of 2013 as the multifamily development deceleration continues. Now to better understand this chart of the S&P 500 that we used in today's thumbnail of the video, let me break it down for you. This yellow line is the S&P 500. The red line down here is the S&P 500 correlated to the housing market. So what does that mean? It means that there's a zero line, you have a minus one and a positive one. So when it is above the zero line in positive territory, that means that the housing market is positively correlated to the S&P 500. When it's below that line, it means that there's a negative correlation going on, meaning one of two things. The housing market is moving up and the S&P 500 is moving down and or the housing market is moving down and the S&P 500 is moving up. I'm highlighting the times that we've been in a negative correlated state. If you notice right out of the gate, what happens most of the time dating back to 2005? Well, you spend the majority of your time, right? We're using the 10 week correlative state. It stands in positive territory most of the time, but every once in a while we start to get into negative territory. And what happens to the stock market during those times? Well, Surprisingly enough, shortly thereafter, we start to see some volatility in the markets. And looking right now where we are, we're starting to dip pretty severely into negative correlated state to the housing market while the S&P 500 is pushing to new highs. So is this a potential concern? Well, let's date back to 2005 that led into the great financial crisis. So in 2005, surprisingly enough, the housing market actually peaked at that time, giving us insight that there could be potential flaws up ahead. But it wasn't until 2007 where it stuck out like a sore thumb. The market continued pressing higher and higher. Meanwhile, the housing market never quite went and matched up to the prior swing high. So this is one of those negative correlated states. And as you can see, the housing market was selling off Meanwhile, the S&P 500 was pressing higher and it eventually caught itself to the downside. Here in 2011, you saw something very similar, but it wasn't as long of a period of time. You had a high and you had lower highs. You had a high and you had higher highs there in the S&P 500. And what happened there shortly after? Well, we saw some volatility come in and around that time. In 2018, we saw something very similar. Now, if you remember 2018 going into 2019, this was known as the Christmas Eve massacre where we saw insane volatility. But as the market continued pressing higher, the market being the S&P 500, the housing market was giving us signs that there could be some potential warnings up ahead. And we ended up getting that volatility. Let's continue on to even a smaller time frame, such as the pandemic. Now, the pandemic is a one-off, so you don't really need to read into this too deeply, but we did have matching highs diverging from the S&P 500, which was putting in a higher high at that specific time. If you go into 21 and 22, our most recent bear market was there in 2022. And what do you notice taking place in the housing market? Well, we have matching highs 
And even if you look very closer right here, we have matching highs, while the market kept on continuing to press higher and higher. So this was giving us some insight that potentially we may see the market volatility step up. And sure enough, we did. Actually, if you zoom in, there's been multiple instances during this bear market where we saw many negative divergences. So in 2022, this is 2022 over here, you saw the matching highs that we previously discussed. Then you saw the market started roaring back. Everyone's like, I knew it'd come back, but we had a lower high right there. We had a lower high right there and the market kept pressing lower. Surprisingly enough, it actually marked the bottom in October where the housing market put in a higher low and the stock market put in a lower low, indicating that we might see, well, the market continue to press up and it timed it perfectly. So where do we stand now? Well, we're standing right now at a very deep negative correlation on the 10 week period, okay? And the market's continuing, continuing to press higher. As you can see over here, this is the housing market up above. Even today, it was down 2.71%, potentially breaking down from this these lower highs, and we kind of got pretty tight right here. So we have this diverging while the market's still holding strong. Does this mean that we're coming into a 2008 scenario? No. Does it mean that where the market's going to be pulling back dramatically? No. But it is still of concern looking back through history. So if we do start pulling back, well, this should all look very obvious in hindsight. But let's take a look at the S&P 500 up close. What's it doing? Right now, it's really just consolidating in a very tight range. In the prior little pullback over here, we marked an anchored uh, volume weighted average price, and we're still holding above that level. So all throughout here is just actually a bullish consolidation. Going into this month, we have our month up here. This is the upper monthly expected move based off of implied volatility and the quarterly expected move. And surprisingly enough, if this is just consolidating, flagging out, this right here, a breakout could bring us very well in to the upper quarterly expected move and potentially even this month up to the upper monthly expected move. However, there is a very important level to distinguish whether or not the market could very well get cracked lower and that level right now in this current time is 5460 this is known as the gamma flip level and the gamma flip level really tells us how dealers and how volatility is going to play in the s p 500 when we're below this level volatility increases liquidity dries up and you see selling into selling you get buying into buying you can get some massive rallies but you can also get some massive sell-offs today we actually came and tested that gamma flip line and i zoned it out down to around 5450 because that has been a pretty important gamma level in the past as well. So this zone here is going to be incredibly critical moving forward to understand if market conditions are going to change. As it stands right now, we are above the gamma flip line, so we're holding strong. We've been pinned at about 5,500, and we have traders reaching up still to 5,600. So if we start breaking above 5,500, our target's going to be 5,550 and 5,600. As of now, it's bullish, but as soon as we get below these levels, it's a time to proceed with caution. Hope today's episode helped out and gave you some insights into the housing market and how it correlates to the S&P 500. See you later.